What's up guys and gals? It is the 2nd of January, 2024. I am the Surly Mechanic and this is, for lack of a better term, Season 2, Episode 1 of Storytime with Surly. Now I have to say, me being who I am, I have a Explorer sitting on jack stands on all four corners with it in drive heating the transmission up that I just replaced one of those eBay specials I did the work on um, I'm going to tell you that two of the things I learned last year the big things is one be patient and I've not always been patient. It's a relatively recent, recent thing for me. Uh, recent is in the last few years. And, and in that, not rushing to get things done. You don't have to work on anybody else's schedule. Because somebody else is doing great, that doesn't mean you have to be doing great at the same time. Somebody else is falling off. Hey, everybody has their time. Everybody has their time to rise to the top, and everybody has their time to fall down on their butt. That's just what, what, it, what it is. And the second thing is sometimes the best answer you could give someone is to not answer at all. And I, and I mean that in regards to if someone is running their mouth, sometimes the best best thing you can do is move forward. Because you empower that person who's doing this by giving them a little bit of yourself when you respond. So the best response, the best answer, the best way to go about it is just not even worry about it. Because they're so stuck in their own small, insignificant little world where they run everything that you don't need to waste your time traveling there. You got bigger things to do. So that being said, this is what this story is about. This story is about knowing and not knowing. And I've covered this before, I think. But... That's a big thing to me. If you don't know something, say I don't know it, but I'll find it out. I, I'm instructing my kids on this, especially my, my oldest daughter. It's a very much a, an assumption game or an I know. Well, you don't know. If you don't know, it's okay. Say you don't know. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And as a parent, it is my job, if I don't know something, a question that they ask, I say, I don't know, but we'll find out. Same thing with my wife. I don't know, but we'll find out. Now, that's not to say that someone on a professional level definitely knows something. If I call a plumber, I'm not a plumber, and he says, this is your problem. If I call a carpenter, and he says, this is your problem. If I call an electrician, he says, this is your problem. I call a tax specialist, and that tax specialist says, this is your problem. Okay, this is what you do. You know. I'm glad you know. I don't know. So the other day, a shout out to Jeff. I've worked on several of Jeff's vehicles, his son's vehicle. Um, the other day, this guy Jeff called me. Hey, man, I know it's New Year's Eve, but... Uh, I can't get the brakes to bleed on my Suburban. I just changed the front calipers. And my first thought was, where's the bleeder screw? If the bleeder screw is on the bottom side of the calipers, you got them flipped backwards because they'll fit either passenger or driver side. And if the bleeder screw is on the bottom of the caliper, you're not getting all the air out of the system. So he proceeds to go up to, I said, check that. He goes, all right, I'll get back with you. Well, he proceeds to go up to O'Reilly's, and they assure him he bought the right part, and that's what the picture shows. And so he calls me back. Hey, man, they said that that's the right caliper. Yes, I'm sure that is the right caliper for the vehicle, but it's on the wrong side. They sold you. This was on the right front. 
that he said that the the bleeder screw was on the bottom of the caliper. They sold you two pass or two driver side calipers. I know this. The air's just gonna sit there in the top of that caliper without the bleeder screw up top. I know this. Hundred percent. Like I would have bet money on that and won. And sure enough, he goes back up there and has them look up a right front caliper and pull it out of the box off the shelf and what do you know the bleeder screw is up top this is not to say that you can trust every professional at whatever their profession is there's some people I, I don't trust to cut my grass and they could be some sort of engineer um, but I take a lot of pride in my reputation. And I put a lot in that. Even if I lose out in the long run. That's just me. And, and that being said. There is a gamble with using used parts. I'm not going to say that I don't do it. I do. If somebody requests it. Yeah man we'll find you a junkyard transmission. Yeah, man, we'll find you a junkyard, whatever. No problem. It's your vehicle. And the biggest issue that I ever had was a couple years ago, a customer had me change an engine out in a car, and obviously I can't run it on the bench. It's a fuel-injected V6 uh, Chevrolet 3.6 or whatever it was, 3.8 or 3.5. I don't remember what it was. And... You know, looked good on the crate. Put it in, and it had the same problems as the one that came out of it. I mean, it's luck of the draw. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, and that's the gamble. But nine times out of ten, you get something from a salvage yard. It's you're you're, you're set, and then that that one time will bite you. And here's the thing: if you do right by ten people. They're going to tell one, two, three, four, five other people. If you do wrong by one person, that one person is going to tell a thousand people. So that is also where no such thing as bad press comes in. But I take a lot of pride in my work. And I wish that everyone did the same. And... There are folks out there who like to pretend that they're hot shot and pretend that they're um, a badass. You know what I mean? When in actuality, they're not the ones actually putting the work in. Not at all. And this is probably why I haven't excelled in some form or fashion in a corporate mechanical setting is because I don't believe in that whole we succeed but when something happens what did y'all do well it was we when we were doing great but y'all when there was a snafu um no 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 it's still we we messed up but unfortunately a lot of corporate industrial commercial settings don't work they want to they want to scapegoat which is why I take pride on my name this is my name on my shirt and that's what I want to teach my children is always be proud of what you do I don't care what you do if you want to go to college you go to college and be the best student you want to go work at McDonald's I wish the best for you but you be the best hamburger flipper that they got somebody needs to push a broom Somebody needs to use a shovel. Somebody needs to sit at a desk. Just be good at what you're doing. And that way there's no question, no question, when it comes down to whether or not you have the right answer, there is no question, no question, none. And there go the roosters, he hears me talking. So... This is Season 2, Episode 1, Storytime with Surly. And I'm feeling a bit preachy right now. I don't know what to do with this hand. 
I need to go wash some fingernails, boy. I'll tell you that. But be proud of what you do and be knowledgeable in what you do. That whole mentality is a, oh, I don't need to know this. I'll pay people to know it. That's great. Cool. But don't try to pretend to be something that you're not. Oh, well, we. Well, no, we. There's no we. There's no we. I was laying on the ground. Me. Me. Right here. Surly. I was laying on the ground. I was up when the sun came up. I was out here in the cold. Not you. Be proud of what you're doing. And don't worry about everybody else. That's for sure. Don't worry about everybody else. You let them do their thing. Alright, so we've gone a mile and a half on jack stands. I'm going to check the fluid level in this uh, Explorer. And I'll see you guys for episode two. Y'all have a great day. Make sure you like, subscribe, question, comment, concern, criticize, jazzercise. I know I need to trim and or brush my beard. It's probably got a bunch of Ford dirt in it. Uh, stay tuned. Also, I start a new job on the 8th of this month as a millwright for a local place over here. So I will still be doing automotive stuff and motorcycle stuff and four-wheeler stuff and lawnmower stuff and generator stuff. You know. That, that's just what I do. So we'll see y'all later.